crisis is the rally cry of the tyrant. Crisis is the rallying cry of tyrants. James Madison said that over 200 years ago. Because tyranny is always lurking just around the corner. Like what Mr. Obama said to those college students recently, that those people who tell you that tyranny is lurking around every corner, you know, I got to ask you, for a guy who's done all this damage to the country, why would you listen to him over a guy like James Madison? Who actually was part of the group of founders that gave us what he's attempting to destroy. I mean, really, think about it. Crisis is the rallying cry of the tyrant. And what's important is that every piece of legislation that Obama says, we have to pass right away. If I've heard that phrase, pass it right away, Congress should pass this right away. Every time you hear that, you should, the first phrase that jumps into your mind should be crisis is the rallying cry of the tyrant. The Obamacare bill rushed through, nobody read it, 2,500 pages, 2,700 actually, now turned into 20,000 pages of legislation and growing by leaps and bounds by the day. I mean, the tyranny of just that piece of legislation alone qualifies him for impeachment. Really. And most of Congress. In fact, everyone in Congress who signed it. Because none of them read it. None of them. If that's not a violation of your oath of office, I don't know what is. Now we have the next boondoggle, the immigration bill. <laughs> you know... The gang of eight, thugs all, passed this Corker Hoven Amendment. And when you see the bullet points out of this thing, which none of them bothered to read, by the way, it was a 1,200-page substitute bill, and none of them bothered to read it. Their true tactics are outlined very clearly. Let's just run through them, if we might. Immediate amnesty before enforcement of the border. Well, that pretty much says it all. <laughs> I mean, we can even stop reading right there. <laughs> I mean, really, folks. I mean, if you're going to issue immediate amnesty before you enforce the borders, there's nothing further to talk about with this bill. That settles the whole issue right there. The hash has been settled. If this bill is intended to issue amnesty without border enforcement, then it is... Null and void and of no effect because it is unconstitutional, extra-constitutional, and a betrayal of the oath of office of every senator and House member who votes for it. I'm going to read you the rest anyway, but I want you to recognize that already, just based on bullet point one, this whole thing should be removed. And there, there and again, I use my, my, my coined phrase, no immigration until the borders have been verifiably sealed and all illegals have registered. How long will that take? I don't really care. I don't care if it takes another year after the registration period begins. I don't care. We've been at this for 40 or 50 years now with borders wide open to, I mean... Just anybody who wants to pour over. And so one more year after the borders are verifiably sealed is immaterial to me. And quite frankly, since they're illegally here, it should be of no moment to them either. I mean, we're granting them the ability to stay while they register. So whether it takes one year or five years should be really of no interest to them. 
for the proponents of it. They can't wait to yell crisis. And I think we already addressed that. This bill also guts legal requirement for for the biometric exit entry system. Now, that's a system that they were going to put in place that would take biometric information from anyone entering or exiting the country so that they would have a trackability factor for anyone here, especially those who overstay visas. Because not all, for the record, by the way, only half of illegal immigration comes from the southern border. The other half is people who fly in here or boat in here or however else they get here, and they overstay a visa. They come here to go to universities. They come here to do some kind of a student project, and they just never leave. We don't know who they are. We don't know where they are. We don't know how to find them. It's a, it's a, at least that's their claim. It's interesting to me that the NSA could tell you how you like your coffee. They could tell you everybody that you spoke to last week, but they can't find a bunch of illegals here who have overstayed their visas. Hmm. Something fishy about that. But I digress. Millions of green cards, permanent residency cards, will be issued before enforcement of the borders. Well, again, that goes back to the first bullet point, immediate amnesty before enforcement. Therefore, we have nothing further to discuss about this bill. Because if we don't seal the border, we'll just be back here again in 10 or 15 or 20 years, going through the same boondoggle again. Except, guess what? With all of those new voters, you won't even have a conservative arm of the government attempting to fight it back. No border surge. Agents aren't required to to lock down the borders until 2021. (laughs) You've got to be kidding me. I mean, look, our Constitution very clearly tells us the border should already be locked down. To put a, a, a date ad infinitum of 2021 on there is so absurd, it's laughable. And if this wasn't the absolute sellout of our country, I would laugh. Unfortunately, the consequences are far dire, far more dire than that. No fence requirement. The DHS retains discretion in this bill that will determine whether or not we should have a fence and to call for one within the next 10 years. Litigation also provides an escape hatch to block the building of the fence and to make matters worse, Janet Napolitano unilaterally can declare that that's not an an appropriate use of resources. That's their quote, not mine. (laughs) I kid you not. And she can declare the fence, the fence whole, the whole fence issue null and void because it's in an, it's an inappropriate use of resources. (laughs) You gotta be kidding me. Really? I mean, we're going to hand Janet Napolitano that kind of power. And by the way, I haven't brought up the fact that the DHS is now asking for the same level of authority to monitor Americans that the NSA had. The major difference there, by the way, is that the NSA is an intelligence agency. The DHS is a law enforcement and policing agency. And if you give the DHS the same authority as you give to the NSA to monitor Americans, we're done. Imagine how they will abuse that authority. Okay, I don't want to get too far off this issue of immigration, but if most Americans better be aware of that, and you better be on the phone to your senators and your congresspeople, and you better be on your fo- the phone to anyone that will listen to say, if the DHS ever gets the power that the NSA has, we as a nation are sunk. We will be living in a dictatorial fascist nightmare we will never escape from without an armed conflict. Okay, legalization for gang members and convicted criminals. you got to be kidding me. They actually wrote that into the law. Is that insane or what? So you're going to legalize gang members and criminals who have been convicted of committing crimes here while while here illegally, And you're going to now give them a green card and say, 
all's forgiven. <laughs> I mean, please. Guaranteed welfare access for illegal immigrants. That's a financial no-go because we're, we can't afford the welfare we got now for our people. How the heck are we ever going to afford it for another 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 million illegals? Because mark my words, this isn't going to end with the 11 million they say we have, which is bogus number, by the way. They, they've been saying 11 million since Reagan days. Are you going to try and tell me that none of these people are having sex and pumping out kids? Are you going to tell me that nobody news come across the border or the death rate of illegals equals the income rate? I don't buy it. It's not 11 and a half million. It's more like 20 million. And to make matters worse, when they open up the floodgates to all of their relatives, it's going to be 50 million. That's one sixth again our population. And all of those people are going to outvote you. The Battery Station in West Plains is your headquarters for getting and being prepared. Natural disasters, civil unrest, personal and family protection, long-term sustenance, and most importantly, peace of mind. Berkey bottles and home-sized water purification systems, survival food, MREs, freeze-dried food, survival knives, lanterns, ammunition, military sleep systems, and of course, batteries of all shapes and sizes. Take charge of your own survival and security. The Battery Station, 303 Washington and West Plains, 417-257-7799 or BatteryStation.com. Out of 365 days a year, we celebrate holidays, anniversaries, and other important days. But there is one day you look forward to, your birthday. I wanna, wanna wish you a happy birthday. Ryan Steakhouse of West Plains is proud to bring you the Birthday Club weekday mornings with Cooper and Company. Company. Our daily winner receives one buffet and a drink to Ryan. Just call your yeah. birthdays in weekday mornings with Cooper, Cooper and Company. Company at 255 Brought to you by Ryan's and the Ozark's Best News Talk. And happy birthday to you. cha cha if you're looking for great deals on iPads or Kindles, look no further than your neighborhood Radio Shack authorized sales center. They've got great deals on the latest iPads and Kindles. Maybe you need a new GPS or an MP3 player to get your music library ready for those barbecues. Whatever your electronic needs, stop by your local neighborhood Radio Shack authorized dealer in West Plains at 1408 Southern Hills Shopping Center or call 417-256-1819. Having difficulty with your computer? Do you think it has a mind of its own? Well, don't be alarmed. This happens to everyone at some point in time. Worry no more. No more. Computer Dave and Kyle can help you out with PC Geeks, a weekly show right here on 107.1 The Point. Tune in Thursdays at 1 o'clock to ask computer-related questions and listen to the web topic of the week. That's PC Geeks here on 107.1 The Point. So, for the record, this particular bill doesn't end the immigration flood. And the reason it doesn't is because it, ex it expands the non-merit, non-merit-based chain migration. What that means is that the... the future flow of illegals into the country, non-merit based, right? In other words, these aren't people we're choosing because they have a PhD in medicine and we need doctors. These aren't people with a, a, a you know, a doctorate in engineering or even a bachelor's in engineering. These are non-merit chain migration. Chain migration means coming in as a flood because you're connected to somebody already here. And that's what will swell those numbers to unimaginable. And how do we prove that, you know, this new guy is really related to the guy we already got here? I mean, he says he is. But, you know, let's be honest. Their birth and death records down there aren't exactly hunky-dory, are they? So anybody can claim to be related to anybody, and it's up to us to disprove the reality of that. That's almost impossible. It doubles the number of guest workers and triples the number of immigrants that are granted lawful permanent residency. This will permanently injure the U.S. job market, which is already under assault from Obamacare, cutting everybody back to part-time work. What we have now, forget illegal immigration. I mean, Obamacare is single-handedly destroying the job market. 
by taking everyone and forcing them into multiple part-time jobs to make up for the one full-time job they used to have. And by the way, you now work two part-time jobs for less money because part-time jobs usually pay less on an hourly basis. And in addition to that, you've lost whatever health insurance benefits you might have had under your full-time job and any other benefits that you might have had. You also lose all seniority and all the rest of that stuff. So the, the impact on our job market just from Obamacare is a staggering blow. Now he gives us the one-two punch by doubling the guest workers and tripling the number of illegals that are granted permanent residency, driving unemployment even higher. And don't believe what you hear when they tell you unemployment is 7.6 or 7.8 or whatever other utopian fant- fantasy number they issue you. The reality of what our true numbers are is closer to 22, 23, 24 percent. That's the truth. Everything else is statistical manipulation. Here's what's even worse. It also opens up the door for our border security officials to have basically no say in what goes on. The ICE officers just recently came out with an official warning, and this is their statement. There is no doubt that if passed, public safety will be endangered and massive amounts of future illegal immigration, especially visa overstays, is ensured. Wow. That is a stunning statement. All right. I'm going to open, by the way, for the record, uh, I also have a piece here that um, there are, out of all of the, the senators who are supporting this, there are five key supporters who were questioned about key functions about the bill, and they couldn't even answer the questions about it. So that just proves that these people aren't even reading it. You know, I heard Rand Paul on an interview the other night, and he came out and said, you know, most of these senators are just trying to pass something so they can have immigration tied to their name so they can use it as a launching pad for their future political careers. Boy, oh boy, folks, if you can find a better example of a betrayal of the trust that's been engendered to you by your constituency... I don't know what that is. If ever there was a reason to repeal the 17th Amendment and put congressional Senate senatorial uh, appointments back into the hands of state legislatures, I can't find a better argument for it. Go ahead, caller. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I, I agree wholeheartedly with your uh, assessment of the immigration fiasco, uh, but I want to congratulate you on going head-to-head against the head of the snake. You you attacked Obama, and he, well, we, we, we know there's more behind him. He's part of an overarching uh, conspiracy, uh, but he is, so far as we are concerned, for all practical purposes, he's the head of the snake that is that is in our hen house, and, and we need to, to keep attacking him, and I think protest march, marches around the White House would be a good way to start. If we had people in Washington marching around the White House saying Obama's got to go. It's not just protesting, though. Here, here's the problem with protesting. You get a few thousand people. You get a few hundred thousand people. It's nothing. When you have 10 or 15 or 20 million people who go to Washington and say, we're not leaving in this city until you do, things will change. Well, but not until then. And the truth of the matter is, I'm too small. I'm too... I'm too much of a lone voice in the wilderness to try to gather that kind of of collective uh, activity. And, you know, it's shameful that I'm not being supported by, in this by all of the other folks out there who also see the truth in that statement that it's the only it's the only interim step we have left before all out and out physical violent revolt. And. I have to say to those people who are unwilling to speak out about this, all the other radio hosts out there, all of the people in the Ministry of Propaganda, there's going to come a day when you're going to rue the day that you didn't offer this to your listeners, your readers, as an option. Right. So thank you very much for the call. I appreciate it. Bye. Go ahead, caller. Welcome to the show. Yes, I have three short comments. third one's probably the best. Okay. Uh, First one, uh, why don't you tell us how you really feel? (laughs) <laughs> well, because if I do that, they'll, they'll be waiting for me at the door when I get off the radio. They may not even wait until the end of the show. <laughs> Second one is thank you for doing it for all of us. Well, thank you guys for listening. And, I, you know, I'm not in this alone, right? This is right. all of us together. So. And the third one, as we speak, 
we are experiencing a miracle that I will share with you one day, but we're going to be okay. We are, are we? Yes, we are. Okay. I'll Tell share me it with you the first time I see it. See oh, you. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> you know, I, I'm encouraged when I hear somebody, you know, call up here, and I, I have seen people make um, personal sacrifices in an effort to try to help us restore our nation. And I got to tell you, it's it's to me, it is the the greatest um, reinforcement of what this program is about. You know, when when I see when I see people who I know were either activated or motivated as a result of the efforts of of, of America's Voice, I, I'm I'm I look at that like I guess like a like a professor would look at a student who's done a good thing. I I don't know how else to express that and I'm proud of it because I know that those people are reinforced in their fight and in their battle every day to try to you know make a difference and I'm I'm grateful for their effort and their sacrifice go ahead caller welcome to the show yeah Michael I'm gonna go on a lot I don't lie here and suggest something is just crazy I guess but uh, you know one of the things that the Constitution allows is letters of mark and reprisal uh, Anybody heard of that lately? <laughs> well, the problem with that is those are normally against foreign nations. Those are not and normally we're not against... not being invaded by Mexico. Who is? <laughs> well, I wouldn't disagree with that. And it's not just Mexico, I might add, you know. Um, I know I, South America, I mean, you know. Yeah. I, you know, I don't disagree with the, the idea of what you're, what you're out there talking, talking about with Mark and Reprisal. I, I just... I don't. I don't know how we. I don't know how we put that together, um, because frankly, I'm, I'm. Well, I'm more worried about. I'm more worried about the the people inside of our gate who are trying to open it up to the enemy than I am about the enemy standing outside. I, I agree with it. the point you is know, to bring to shine a light on it because you know until somebody does something really just scares the hell out of people, they're not going to do anything. I get it. I get it. it. Unfortunately, it's going to take a massive a massive social shift for people to wake up and it may be too late for us all we can do is continue to try to fight our way through it but thanks for the update on that and thanks for that unique idea i get it I, you know talk to you in a bit it's all right as hell. I, even i got to admit it but geez we got to do something we got to do something i don't know 20 million americans storming storming the capital peacefully that's my of- that's my solution that's the best that's the last best interim solution we've got thanks man Go ahead, caller. Welcome to the show. You got seconds left. Good morning. Uh, I just want to acknowledge you for for doing your best to. You have a keen perspective, and you do try to bring uh, focus to what we need to focus on, and what we can take action on. And and uh, just recently, uh, Mac was on. Uh, very recently, was on another person's show, and uh, this the host and every a lot of people know him. He didn't even know that Sheriff Mac had a convention. Because uh, oh you did uh, when was that? Uh, which just totally blows me away. That's what his comment was. Just totally blows me away that he's not. Uh, who is, and who I know is he? Who is who are you referring to there? Another well, Alex Jones. Oh, he did. He didn't. He didn't. And, and Alex Jones knew about the convention before it was happening, and he had every opportunity. All what does it take? <clears throat> Twenty seconds to uh, announce something like that to activate more people, and so I'm in question of why he did not. And I also even called into his show and actually brought up this Second Amendment Preservation Act. He had no idea that it was happening in the state of Missouri, and in the end, didn't even put it on his website. It would, didn't show up on his website for two weeks, yeah. and it wasn't even my reference. It was somebody else's reference, and it didn't have to be my reference. But I'm just wondering why they're not uh, activating more people. And I appreciate start- that you are. The, the music's begun. Thank you for your call. I appreciate it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sum that up in one final st- statement. Here's the problem, folks. Those people that are out there that are supposed to be spokespeople for the masses, spokespeople for you, people who are supposed to be talking like I'm talking today, they've abdicated that in favor of whatever personal ego or money or whatever else it is that they're benefiting from or they've been corrupted or compromised i don't know i don't get it i don't understand how somebody can sell themselves out find us on americasvoicenow.org 
Find us at Facebook.com forward slash America's Voice Now and on YouTube at YouTube.com forward slash America's Voice Now. We are the Ozark's best news talk on KBMV Birch Street.